steps to teaching abroad. Step one, research your options and speak to an advisor. Step two, determine options for TEFL certification and countries for teaching English abroad. Step three, enroll in a TEFL certification course and get TEFL certified. Step four, Connect with International TEFL Academy Alumni Network. Step five, begin your job search process. Step six, <laughs> make your travel plans and visa arrangements if applicable. Step seven, arrive in your destination country and begin teaching English abroad. Did you guys know when you teach abroad, you can decide how long you'd like to teach for, as well as the subject and age group you want to teach, and the type of extracurricular topics integrated into your program? Some countries won't pay you at all, though. Really? That's crazy. After I'm finished my degree, I need to have an income to pay off the student debt. What do you guys think we will be introduced to while teaching abroad? We will learn to adapt get to meet new people, and, and learn, learn about, about their, their cultures. The United States, the United Kingdom, and Switzerland. I know that in the United States, 36 states are below the national average of earning $58,000 per year. That being said, Switzerland goes off for 13 months with salary system. That means an annual salary is paid out in 13 installments, one a month until the end of the year when a worker receives two installments. Let's talk <laughs> about employment after schooling. Do you guys think that schooling sets their students up for employment after their education degrees or sets them up for failure? I've heard that it isn't what you know, but who you know. That's why teaching abroad has become so popular. There are so many opportunities when looking into this that the average person doesn't know about. Fun fact! In Switzerland, most kids start an apprenticeship after elementary school. Depending on the profession, an apprenticeship takes two to four years. Wow! <laughs> I wish Canada had programs where we were able to begin our careers before high school. I know that in the United States, low employment rates are extremely high, and it is something that I believe needs to be changed. Maybe they will implement a system such as this in the coming years to help students figure out a career path. The UK is in the middle of a critical teacher shortage, so schools are eager to hire international teachers. What a great idea to go work in the UK! Fun fact! Did you know a new type of school called studio schools are being implemented in the United Kingdom? They're government funded, but their approach to education is completely different than the average school. They have a strong focus on creativity, the teaching of life skills, and working in small teams on practical projects as opposed to people simply sitting and listening to a teacher. The schools run from 9 to 5, just like an average workplace. This type of teaching is meant to ensure that students' education is rooted in the real world, better equipping them for life outside of school. The United Kingdom has similar subjects when comparing it to Canada, but they are also required to take design technology, geography, and history. The United States has very similar school subjects to Canada, but instead of social studies, they call it history. In lower secondary, children study different subjects. Their national language, German, French, Italian, or Romansh, and two foreign languages. I couldn't imagine learning two foreign languages. I remember in elementary school, I had to take French, and I thought that was hard enough. <laughs> Hey Chelsea, what is the dress code like in Switzerland? There is no strict dress code in Switzerland. Some private schools require a uniform, but it is very uncommon. Hey Callie, what is the dress code like in the United States? It's very similar to Canada. Unless you go to a private school, you might have to wear a uniform. Hey Erica, what's dress code like in the United Kingdom? 
In the United Kingdom, almost all schools wore uniforms. The tradition began in order to give schools a sense of union and equality. Fun fact! Did you know a school in London became the first to allow teenagers to have a later start to their school days? Research found that allowing teenagers to start school 25 minutes later raised alertness levels. This means that the pupils were better able to concentrate on learning without having to resort to raising their caffeine intake. This is not done worldwide, though the United Kingdom deems it important for their students to be more alert in class and could start a movement for other countries as well. Hopefully one day we can teach abroad to further expand our knowledge on international education.